I hope you lot. So that's it. Bye to the Stranglers. I know it's not goodbye, but we all said as goodbyes. Now, I, I'm not going to go on about the gig too much because I know they've still got gigs left on this final tour to do. But it was magic and emotional. Toby was amazing on keyboards. He didn't try and be Dave. He just... He didn't try and fill those shoes. He just... He just took what Dave wrote and... Played it in his own way. It's very weird. I've talked before about the Stranglers being like an old friend. I also have to say, it's actually blowing a hurricane here up north today. <laughs> and there's things banging against the windows and clattering about outside. So any bangs and crashes, I'm not currently being burgled or anything. I don't know what to say about that gig in Leeds. It were it were moving and it felt like everybody was one. There were a couple of like dickheads there. But you always get gig wankers, don't you? You always get someone that come and comes and stands right in front of you, like or people that dance for the hits that bugs the piss out of me. People that like Oh yeah, I know this one. So they come, they shove in down the front and dance. It's like either dance to the gig or watch from the bar. Maybe it's just me getting old and grumpy. But I genuinely feel like I shared a moment with with everybody: Jim, JJ, Baz, Toby, and everybody that was in that venue just saying a massive thank you to the Stranglers and saying a, a, a very emotional goodbye to Dave. They're still going to do festivals. I think they're doing Rebellion or stuff like that, but I don't really do festivals. I like gigs with one band and a support band kind of thing. But it was wonderful. I wouldn't have missed it for the world. I've got, like, I'm off work with one or two health problems at the minute. And it was difficult to go and get there and get back. But it was worth every second of that, of that trip. And so I've been trying to decide what video to do about the Stranglers. I, it had to be a Stranglers Stranglers vinyl video today, although there's the mention of a CD in this video. I know. I'll explain why when we get to it. And I had this idea to do my top 10 favourite Stranglers songs. It's not like a definitive top 10 of their hits. It's songs that have spoken to me and stayed with me either for a few years or for a few decades and this is all in my humble opinion we all take different things from music and music of our youth we all have memories associated with them that are so like so personal but so strong if I don't mention any of your favourites, then that's why. Because these are these are songs that speak to me personally or take me back to a moment of youth or adulthood or middle age or whenever that song's come out. And there's some... It's, it's kind of... Uh, I think it's probably Hugh era heavy. Um, 
that's no slight on Paul, John, Ellis, uh, or Baz, or Jim. Like, there's a lot of memories associated with those. There's a there's a lot of a lot of great songs from every era. And I went to loads of Paul Roberts gigs. I had money, I had a car, I could travel around. And that whole Paul Roberts era, I was there for as many gigs as I could get to. And it was brilliant. And yeah, it wasn't Hugh, it was something different. But it was still, it was still the Stranglers. It was still that core thing. And then when, when Baz came along, I know, and everybody, like, okay, there's... I am in Strangler's Facebook groups and there's always arguments about Hugh or Baz. They're different guys. They do things differently. Baz isn't trying to be Hugh. Baz is just trying to play songs that he loves or wrote. Um, and from my personal opinion, I think he's an absolutely awesome, engaging, electric and entertaining frontman. It feels like JJ's not like as much of a front man he sings a few songs and uh it does feel like baz is the front man it's not his band it's still a collective they're still all equally important so anyway let's get on with these uh with this top 10 and it is in order i don't normally do vinyl videos in any order it's like i don't want to show favoritism no sod that i'm gonna show favoritism and there's some left field selections here, ladies and gentlemen. So in at number 10 is a track from No More Heroes. Mm, but it's not No More Heroes. It's English Towns. English Towns, I think, is like a forgotten Stranglers gem. I just... I love the kind of upbeat, poppy verse. And then when you get into the chorus, it's kind of melancholic and melodic. Dave's kind of little keyboard riff after, you know, No Love in a Thousand Girls. It's just, I just think it's a truly wonderful song. And... From my personal point of view, it's actually better than some of the regularly played songs and kind of hits off this album. So, number 10, English Towns. In at number 9, and here we've got the CD. I have never even seen this on vinyl. Um, I've never, it's not like I've not been able to find a copy. I don't think it was out on vinyl. So this is Sweet 16. Um, and I think it's the first album. Uh, it's definitely the first album without Paul. And I think it's the first album that it was back to, like, mainly JJ, Baz and Dave writing all the songs. And the song of this album... Even though there's some corkers, Spectre of Love is amazing. A Soldier's Diary is just awesome. And I Hate You. And I haven't picked that one because of the sentiment behind it. I find it very sad that two of my heroes, Hugh and JJ, can't seem to find that common ground anymore. But it happens. Friendships and working relationships break down. And when you work with your friends... Sometimes that that gets really difficult. Anyway, the track I've picked off Sweet 16 is Relentless. It's just about getting old. And we're getting older. And our heroes and the people we idolised are no longer with us. But we still look back. And we can see photos of them looking youthful and excited and trying to make a difference and trying to make a musical difference. Like with the internet and having older things, you know, no more heroes. It's like a little time capsule back to when they were spry and we were spry and lively 
and didn't have aches and pains and things like that. And Relentless is about time, just marching on. And it's a wonderful, wonderful song. And it's one that they do live, and it's one that they did on this tour. And I absolutely adore it. Number eight, La Folie. Not the most popular album. I think it's wonderful. And the song that I'm picking that's uh, the reason that this LP is in the top ten is the title track, La Folie. I think it's one of the most beautiful songs that the Stranglers have ever written. Yeah, they wrote, like, sometimes, and it's about, ooh, I am so cross right now. But they could still write, like, poignant and beautiful songs, genuinely, moments of intrinsic musical beauty. And La Folie, for me, is one of those. I love I love going to Paris. I love France. I remember the video shot in Paris. Uh, it's it's a it's like a really magical city. And it, it reminds me of being in Paris and uh, not necessarily doing all the mad touristy things. Uh, I think the last time I went I stayed in Montmartre. And uh, the, uh, I can't remember what travel agent it was, but when we booked that hotel, slap bang in the middle of the red light district, the uh, the lady at like Thomas Cook or wherever did say, you are aware this isn't a family orientated destination. And we're like, we know where we go in love. It's fine. <laughs> And La Folie always, I think it's a beautiful song and it reminds me of Paris as a city and an experience. We've got to have something off uh, Black and White. So at number seven, which song is it off Black and White? Well, again, it's kind of the title track. It's Curfew. I think Curfew is one of the most catchiest musical songs that the Stranglers have ever written. Like, the chorus is like a perfect... Uh, it's, it's like a perfect melody to get stuck in your head. It, it's just such a, a brilliant song. Lyrically, it's very good, very interesting. I really enjoy it. But musically, like the the melody, the structure, it's just like a perfect song. Absolutely perfect song. In at number six, Pop Pickers. It's a track off Dark Matters. Mm, now there's some awesome songs to pick off here. Um, and I should really pick if you should see Dave. But that song doesn't necessarily lift my spirits. It makes me feel sad that my heroes that seem to have eternal youth are getting old and infirm now. No, the song I'm picking off Dark Matters is Last Men on the Moon. It's just brilliant. It really is. Like, obviously, it's like one of my top 10 favourite Strangler songs because it's in this top 10. Uh, again, like Curfew, it's just, it says some interesting things. That's great. But musically, and how the song is produced, it could not be any better. Um, and they do, it's, it's amazing. They do it on the tour, and it's an absolutely amazing song. It's them at their, like, for the current lineup, their most songwritingly creative and showing that talent, that ability, and that, like, little spark of musical genius that's kept them relevant and current 
for the past however many decades. In at number five on our Stranglers chart is a song off of Gospel According to the Men in Black. Not the most popular of their Hugh era albums. I think it's wonderful. And the track I'm picking is Hello to Our Men. There's something magically sinister about this whole album. But that particular song, there's something about it. And I don't know what it is. I know one thing that, that it reminds me of is... Uh, is I, I, I felt it was sinister. when I, was, I, I got this album when I was a lot younger, when I was still at school. And I didn't do right well at school. Um, undiagnosed uh, learning disorders that nowadays are uh, fairly easily picked up on. I was kind of just put into the slow learners group, <laughs> as you do. So I'd sit uh, in my room, listening to The Stranglers, reading either uh, horror comics, old horror comics that I bought on trips to Leeds, or horror really trashy violent horror paperbacks that i nicked off my dad that being like the one that set me off on my horror journey and i'd sit and i'd, I'd listen to me stranglers tapes i had them all on tape at the time and read read weird forgotten old horror stuff and that was my little escape from whatever else was going on in the world, whatever rubbish was going on at school and me not being, able, uh, not being able to understand why I couldn't do things in the same way that a lot of the other kids did. Uh, and this was, okay, yeah, the teachers weren't allowed to hit you anymore. That had come in. But it had only just come in. So there were still quite a few old school teachers that if you couldn't get things right they'd just give you a clout and i'd love to catch up with them i wouldn't i wouldn't attack them or out. i'd just be like you know you like slapping kids do you want to have a pop now pal <laughs> so hello to our men at number five at number four It's a song of live excerpt, and it's very specifically this live version. It's a favourite of mine. It's a Strangler's favourite of mine anyway. But this live version is the best I have ever heard them play it, even better than the studio recording. Sorry, getting the light on it. And it's Go Buddy Go. Again, it's so basic. It's so... There's not really much to it. 12-bar blues riff. Some funky bits on top. But... Like, it, Dave does extra things in this. And Hugh does extra things in this. And there's ex, the song's extra long. I love Go Buddy Go. But this live version on Live Excerpt is... It's, it's, it is it's it's the best version of Go Buddy Go I have ever heard in my life. And I am so thankful to this day that this gig was captured and put out on vinyl so we could all enjoy that moment that must have just been so amazing to hear him do Go Buddy Go. And it just like, you know, go off in whatever rhythm and blues direction they wanted to take it it's just awesome in at number three it's hanging around from Rattus. there's some great tracks on this genuinely like songs that i adore like down in the sewer goodbye to lose sometimes there's just some amazing songs on it but hanging around how gorgeous is JJ there? <laughs> Look at him with those cheekbones. Dave doesn't really suit wearing makeup as much as JJ, I don't think. <laughs> like, it just, just how it starts, just instruments coming in individually 
until that bass comes in, until JJ's bass comes in, and it is. JJ's bass. If you love the Stranglers, JJ's bass. How does he make it sound like that? How does he make it do that? How does he make it like punch you in the face or in the ears? Like, right, re it's a bass punch reaching right down your lug hole, smacking your eardrum going, listen to this bass. And when the bass kicks in in hanging around, oh, it's just beautiful, it's perfect. And I love hanging around because it's, it reminds me of those times in your youth where you go into a club, you're going to see a band and you're not sure if there's going to be fisticuffs. I'm not saying we're all like, oh, back in my day, it was just constant fighting. It, it's probably quite similar now. But like, you, you weren't sure if a bunch of right-wing skins would turn up and start like causing bother, which seemed to happen a lot in Leeds. Or, like, if there'd be somebody that would just piss you off so much. Because some people didn't get it. Some people did get it. Like, first time I ever... First gig I ever went to was The Damned. The original lineup at uh, Leeds Poly. Again, decades ago. I was still in school. And it was such good-natured, like shoving and jostling and everybody was having a good time one lad this lad lost his shoe and everybody just paused for a sec while this lad could find his shoe got it back on and he was like shoes on we're all good and everyone just piled back in again and a lot of punk gigs were like that if you it it, it got rough but if you fell down people would pick you up again and dust you off and make sure you're all right and back in to the fray but that didn't always happen, and people didn't always get that it was meant to. It was meant to be physical fun with people. It's weird, isn't it? It's physical and aggressive fun with people you've probably never met before and will probably never see again. But you look after each other, and you don't let it escalate to like actual. Ugh. I saw the meteors at Leeds Poly, and I think it was Leeds Poly again decades ago and that was horrible it was a brilliant gig i've thoroughly enjoyed seeing the meteors i love the meteors but it wasn't like good natured it was i'm trying to get a punch in on you but make it seem like it's just gig shovage and i don't know where this was going what song am i on about oh yeah hanging around Oh, yeah, I remember now. Sorry, I have got a middle-aged man's brain. And when I start talking about something else, I go wandering off in another direction. So it's almost like hanging around reminds me of, like, turning up at a club. And maybe there's a one of the support bands. Maybe there's three or four bands on. The, the first few on are just aren't even getting paid, or maybe they're getting a pint. And everybody's looking at the stage, everybody's milling about, and you find your place... And you're not sure if it's going to kick off. You're not sure what's going to happen. But that's rock and roll. And you get that little adrenaline surge. And it's kind of like, here we go. You get, I, I, I get a little bit of a dab on. Get a little bit sweaty. And it's like, here we go. And then, like, it was just like that for me. So, yeah. Number three is hanging around. Number two. I thought I'd better show off some of my singles as well. It's all album tracks so far. It's not nice and sleazy. It's shut up. What an, what an amazing song. How long is it? Is it like a minute? <laughs> Let's have a look. Oh, that's nice and sleazy. Shut up. It's one minute and six seconds. And it's so angry. And frustrated and at the end of your tether kind of thing but and they get that aggression in but there's no effing and jeff in it don't like not that that bothers me it's just like it shows how these guys could write songs and they could elucidate what they meant with the use of the english language 
and it's it's punchy and short and aggressive and angry and cross and anybody i think male or female it's not it's not a man thing if you've ever been just like in a relationship where you're just like oh for heaven's sake i can't do this anymore you just ooh give me pip then and you just walk away like i'm going to have to leave you here you can argue with yourself all night it's like i'm getting nowhere you you do your thing and i'm going to go somewhere that's a bit nicer for me and that's that's what it says and we've i'm sure we've all been there or the majority of us have so before i look at my all time favorite stranglers song I want to do a couple of honourable mentions. Ah, oh, I've got it off this one. So, honourable mentions that didn't quite make the list, but nearly, nearly, nearly did. And it's this is uh, off the beaten track, so it's like B-sides and stuff if you've not seen this one. And it's Love 30. The B-side to Golden Brown, which is a... If you don't know it, it's a bass-heavy instrumental about tennis. It's weirdly poor, like, as a concept. But, J again, JJ's bass. I love JJ Bunnell. I don't know him that well. I've only met him, like, a handful of times. He's always been very charming and lovely. But, like, as a performer, I think he's one of my all-time favourite performers. He ranks up alongside, and I mean this in a... I'm not comparing the two, but, like, love I have for that man. He ranks up alongside Captain Sensible for me, and if anybody knows me, like, any, any of my mates are watching... And you know how much I adore the damned and Captain Sensible. All my life it's been the damned and the stranglers. They're my, they're my top, top favourites. So, yeah, Love 30. It's, yeah, it's about tennis, which sounds rubbish. But that bass part, it doesn't need anything else. It's very, it's, it's, it's a very empty song. But, it's just JJ showcasing his bass, and it takes him about half the song for to, to get those solos going, but the solos are just perfect, beautiful, and melodic, and everything. that, that it, it kind of encapsulates so many things I love about JJ Bunnell. So, yeah, Love 30 gets an honourable mention. What else does? Oh, Puppets! Off of Nosferatu. Right, so... I, w I wanted to include, like, some solo stuff. Um, and I know it's going back to that Hugh era, but I don't think... I don't know. Right, so I got, I got this long before the days of the internet. We used to go to Leeds... Go around all the record shops, vinyl tap, and oh, all of her. And you just had to see what they had in. You couldn't go with an idea. You had ideas of things that you would buy if they had them, but you couldn't really go and go. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go and find a copy of Nosferatu today because I want to get it. You just had to buy whatever they had in, and there was no internet. Um, and the. The ads in the back of, like, record collector and stuff seemed a bit daunting to send off a postal order. It will, I, I, that's too, faff, I just want to go and buy it from somewhere. So when I actually got this, um, I was thrilled to get it because I already had um, the Don't Bring Harry Christmas EP, which I love that turkey's head, it's brilliant. And obviously it's got a track from this and a track from Euroman Cometh. Um, so it's Puppets which is the last track on the album. And it's probably one of the most poppy tracks on the album. Um, I just love the melody. I love the structure of the song, the melody. I mean, Nosferatu on this album is one of my favourite songs ever. Um, 
And which one does Ian Jury sing on? Is it Wrong Way Round? I love I love Ian Jury's like fairground barker on this. So yeah, Nosferatu puppets gets an honourable mention. Also getting an honourable mention, you're not going to be surprised at this one. It's Euro Man Cometh by J.J. Bunnell, which uh, in that huge A.J. rivalry, I actually like this slightly better than Nosferatu. Just my personal opinion. And I've picked Jellyfish. I just love the message it, it gives out. There's so much you can there's so much you can read into it. It's a, there's so many great songs on this album. But like Jellyfish to me I don't want to be your enemy but I sure won't be your slave. Jellyfish I think it's one of the best songs that that JJ Bunnell has been involved with. But it's not a Strangler's song. So it can only get an honourable mention in this chart. The last honourable mention, and this is probably associated with hilarious memories, is um, She's Not There, the cover of the old uh, Zombies song that JJ sings on. Uh, this, so this was, if you're not sure, if you're not familiar with the Purple Helmets, it was John Ellis, um, who was previously in The Stranglers, Manny Elias, JJ Bunnell, Dave Greenfield, Alex Gifford. Um, and they did covers of old 60s uh, kind of beat songs and stuff like that. And JJ singing She's Not There. I love that song anyway. I think it's an absolutely wonderful song. It's just genius. And I love hearing covers of it. The more covers I hear of it, the more I love it. It's, it's kind of weird. So many songs, I'm a bit like, yeah, leave it alone. Don't cover it. It's fine. The original is good. Let's just leave it there. But she's not there. I just love hearing other people do it. And I know UK Subs' version is just awesome. But the day I got this, <laughs> where, uh, I'd just left school and uh, me and some friends went into, went into Wakefield uh, and we all ended up getting arrested for shoplifting. And the frustrating thing is, we had, none of us had nicked anything that day. It was, I think it was a shop that thought we were being suspicious, rang the law, and we got bust, we got pulled, we got arrested for shoplifting. I had this, this was all I got, but thankfully, I had a, a receipt in the, uh, from EGS Records in the bag. Um, and yeah, they took us to Wood Street Police Station and uh, looked us up. And they said we could have a phone call. I think they were trying to, like, put the fear of God into us, kind of trying to scare the young punks straight kind of thing. Uh, so I rang my dad <laughs> at work, who was, sorry, fucking livid. <laughs> and I said, Dad, I've been arrested for shoplifting, but I didn't nick out. And they were like, well, there's no smoke without fire. You can bloody stay put until you've learnt your lesson. And he hung up. And that was... <laughs> I'm not sure about the legalities of it all, but it was a bit of a different age. It didn't stop us being young, annoying Herberts, but they tried at least. <laughs> so, yeah, the day I bought that, I'd been, uh, been arrested for shoplifting. Anyway... Back to the top ten, and my number one Stranglers song that I adore. It's been an anthem of my life. If I had to choose a song for some reason that represents my life and the whole story, it's The Raven. I just think it's an amazing song, and it talks to me in a way that no other song has ever spoken to me. Musically, it's amazing. It's so good. But lyrically as well, it was the whole... Um, and when you find me all alone, your world has never been my own. 
I've never really fitted in. I've just noticed. What's that from? Oh, that's uh, Stranglers. The concert ticket tucked inside. That's uh, O2 in Leeds from 2016. <laughs> I didn't... That will have been the Raven tour. That will have been the tour that they did the Raven. I do that. I like... If I've got concert tickets, I stick them inside, like, relevant LPs. And uh, then when I get it out to play it, it's kind of like, oh, my word, that's in there. Um, Sorry. Yeah, I've never really fitted in. I've never fitted into a, a musical tribe, like a youth culture group. I don't fit in now. I don't really want to fit in. I don't try not to fit in. I just do and have things I like that make me happy because I'm middle-aged now and I'm reaching that age where you give so few fucks about what people think about you and if something makes you happy and don't hurt anybody else just crack on and do it just just make yourself happy and I don't fit in and I've never fitted in and this song for me is like the stranglers just putting their arm around me and just going mate we don't fit in nobody feels like the fit in nobody even vaguely interesting feels like the fit in and that's all right you know we're huge pop stars we don't fit in you don't have to fit in just just be yourself and be happy not fitting in And that's what I love about that song. There's a lot more to this song that I don't take from it about Viking stuff and all that. That's that's the little nugget that I take from it. You don't have to fit in. Just do your thing. Because life is short. And you don't know when things are going to turn up and affect it and change it or limit it or end it. So just do... Do what makes you happy throughout your life. And if it's different, if you are different, it's absolutely fine. And The Raven was the second album I, uh, the second Stranglers album I ever got. The first was Rattus. And just listening to that, I've had that with me all my life. Just the lads just go, mate, it's fine. Do you care if people don't understand you? Or question why you're doing what you're doing. It's not for them. It's not. You're not hurting anybody. You're not affecting anybody. Just don't try and fit in if you don't want to. And it's fine. And we feel the same. And here's a song about it. So that's my top ten. That's my number one. That's my number one song. If that, if I was on De Desert Island Discs. I'll never be on Desert Island Discs. But if I was on Desert Island Discs, that would definitely be on there. The Raven by The Stranglers. So that's that's it. I've kind of said me goodbyes to The Stranglers live. I haven't said goodbye to any of my records. And there's a lot of albums I didn't, I didn't even touch on, like uh, Stranglers in the Night. I love... Uh, time to Die. Uh, about Time. I love Sinister. I think Sinister's a brilliant song. Does anybody remember going to see The Stranglers during the Paul Roberts era? And they had The Stringlers. And it was a string quartet through the entire gig. I think a string quartet of young ladies. That never gets mentioned. The Stringlers. That was such a bad name. <laughs> so thank you guys. Thank you to everybody that mucked in and contributed to that big, beautiful, weird family in black that is the entire entity that is the Stranglers. And that's everybody that's worked on an LP, everybody that's worked on a concert, and every one of you lot that's bought a Stranglers LP and listened to it. It's been brilliant. And the gig this weekend was emotional for so many reasons. And it was wonderful. 
and I just wanted to do something to vocally say thanks lads thanks and lads and lasses and everybody that's mucked into that family in black because it's been amazing and it will continue to be amazing and be a huge part of my life anyway I'll leave it there thank you for watching guys it's going to be books on Wednesday and uh, trying to do vinyl every Sunday and then a smattering of other odds and sods and horror stuff and weird stuff on my channel so uh, thank you for joining me and I'll see you lovely lot in whatever next video you join me in